Hey, all right, this is amazing. And what I experienced yesterday and went through and uh, all the things that are going on in my personal life, the way it, it's directly tied to this verse, the words in these verses here, um, it was just amazing. Look, look, I, I'm trying to, um, you know, I'm divorced, right? So, so anyways, you know, we trust each other though. You know, there was no like distrust there. So anyways, you know, I just never took my ex-wife's name off my account and vice versa, same, you know, it's not a big deal. We never thought it'd be a problem, right? But, uh, well, it came a point where I was uh, trying to buy a new home, right? Uh, anyways, so I had to get her name off my account, my uh, finance manager or whatever said. So, so anyways, I took the divorce decree by a judge, by a circuit court judge, right? Saying she waives all rights to all these things, all these accounts and stuff. Down to the bank, figuring it ain't going to be a problem. They'll take off. Well, it's a problem. <laughs> they won't do it, right? They wouldn't do it. So, um, anyways, we both have to be present, apparently. But yet, we work different shifts. It's, it's going to be very difficult, right? But anyways, the, the deal is this. Basically, they're completely ignoring the judge's ruling. They're completely ignoring it. And look, this, this applies here, spiritually. Like, like God is our ultimate judge, Christ, who, who will judge all creation, right? Jesus Christ. And they're ignoring this judge's uh, authority, right? And uh, actually, uh, I don't believe they can, but they say it's against their policy. But I believe if, if there were something bad to occur, like, like let's just say she went in and took all the money out or something, they can be held liable. Right? Because I went down there, showed them the judge's decree is what he ordered and, and has everybody's signature on it, the judge, us, both of us, and you know. Anyways, the thing is, now if I were to get in contact with an attorney, my attorney, right, I would have to pay them money and they would have to send a letter to the bank stating the law, you know, the law that they're supposed to abide by and the penalties they could incur by not abiding by this judge's decree. And then they would do what they're supposed to do to begin with. But me being a common man, a common man, not a person of nobility with a title, right, here in this world, here in this world, I have to hire an attorney. And attorneys are all esquires, right? They have a title of nobility. So this is why when our constitution, and that's spiritual too, look that up, when this constitution was made, um, people who had a title of nobility were not allowed to hold public office. Because in this world, these people with titles of nobility will oppress and ignore the common man. They will be tyrannical. They'll, they'll, they'll steal from them. They'll take them. They'll suck out their life essence, their existence, right? They'll steal from their work and their labor to benefit themselves, right? And that's what's going on with the governments of this world, which they want us all to comply with their governorship, their mind control, right? And basically have a ruling class and a slave, an enslaved class. This is all spiritual now, right? So if my attorney, who has a title of nobility as an esquire, were to send an email, uh, an official letterhead, an official document of the law, of the law to them, then they would be forced to release these accounts, to release us, like Christ paid for us, our accounts in full, so Satan can no longer hold us captive here in this world. We, we will be uh, uh, redeemed. We've been redeemed by Christ. And we will have that glorified body. We will be transformed to be like him in an eternal glorified body. Which, like I said before, I saw, and in, in not in that particular verse that talks, in my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there you may be also. That word mansions, when I've seen it in mo several other verses, but not that one, but you, weirdly, but uh, in several other verses, mansions means metaphorically a body, a glorified body, I believe it's talking about. But I'm not saying there's not some home or big glorious place for us there that he's prepared to. I mean, 
but it said more metaphorically a body, a mansion. I believe it's speaking about a glorified body when we're taken home. Okay, but anyways, so this verse um, is First Peter chapter 2. And I'm going to read verses 10 through 12, but the one that I felt this Holy Spirit, my whole body just lit up, man. So this is, this is some beautiful revelation here. And, uh, but I'm going to go over, like I normally do, a couple words in the verse before it and the verse after it. So you're going to get everything in its full context, the way it was meant to be understood. And I'm being led by a spirit. His spirit talks to me. There's no way I could ever see these things on my own. Let no man teach you. Only the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God can lead you into all truth and righteousness and turn you from, convert your way of thinking from this carnal, fleshly understanding by your own, just the outward, exterior things. Now he's converting, he, now we're giving the throne the, of our hearts to him. And our heart is the seat of our passions, lusts, desires, and emotions. All that, right? So there is that. So now we're being governed by a different governance than from this world, a heavenly governance from Christ himself, who is God incarnate, who is the word, who is the word of God that was made flesh in the likeness of simple flesh. He was not simple flesh. He's God's only begotten son, one of a kind, monogene. And if you look at that blood on the shroud of Turin, there was only one chromosome on that, right? So it's it's different than every other human being. So it's different, right? He was different. He was one of a kind, the alpha and the omega, the first and the last, the only physical representation of God himself. So there's that. And that's why he's the only one that was pure enough in the, the pastoral lamb, right? He was pure that could pay the penalty for all of our sins to set us free. Set us free from our own carnal way of thinking in our minds. So here we go. Understand this. This is this is so beautiful and I hope I don't stutter too much and all that crap. And, and so anyways, here we go. 1 Peter 2, 10 through 12. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have attained mercy. Now, there's a couple words here, which in time past, which is a Greek word, 42, 18, as time passes, right? As time passes, but it's it's made up of two different, a couple of different words, which is 4, 2, 2, 5, and 50, 37, which means this. So, which as time passes in this place, however long that is, also, right, we were not people, right, a people of God. Um, we were not a people. And this word people is 2992, which means we were not of the same stock. We were different. We're different. Different. We are not of the same stock as the people of God, right? But now, but are now the people of God, right? And, and these people, now we are of the same stock, of God. And that word God there is 2316, which means Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now we are the people of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And it can also mean when you look up that word 2316, gods and goddesses with a small g. Things of, of the Supreme God, the Supreme Divinity, of the Supreme God. I do not know what's going on here. I think they're cutting grass or something, maybe. All right, I hope you can hear me. I'll talk loud enough. So, so now we are of the Supreme God, due to Him, due to what He has done. We are due to Him. We belong to Him, being likened unto Him, to resemble Him. And then it's it said uh, with a special connotation of 3588, which means all who have strayed from the path of righteousness and all our inflections being deflected, knocked off the straight and narrow way by the things of this world, but we receive, now we receive what we need to recover and get back on that straight and narrow path because we are conformed, likened unto him, to resemble him. So all that's contained there, right? So, so we had not obtained, obtained mercy before because we were just part of this world, differing, you know, full of pride, conceit, and all that, different, different beliefs, all that. But now we are one, one people in God, people of, of God. And look at that word, of God. Look at the word 
Elohim, H430, which is the word God all through Genesis 1. Part of the supreme God. Special possessions of the supreme God. Gods with a small g and goddesses with a small g. Angels, angels, the angels of the most supreme God, a spiritual eternal being that was predicated from the beginning to have eternal life. It's our soul. It's what's in us, right? So anyways, here we go. And our light has been covered up in darkness, the darkness of this flesh, which makes us willfully ignorant, willfully ignorant. And this is really bad. I don't know where these guys are. So anyways, here we go. Now verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against your soul. So when I read that verse, I just, my whole body lit up. I felt this Holy Spirit. So now I'll go through it looking at all the lexicons, right? Which is the pictographic language it's written in, but I'm looking at the way they were translated by bear, bears, mounds, BBB, strongs, all these, but being led by his spirit. I could never see these things. He led me right through it. So now I'll read that verse the way his Holy Spirit revealed it to me as I was studying it. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against your soul. So here it is. These, and this was all contained in the pictographic language that it's been translated by the experts, these people who study these languages, but you have to be led by a spirit because the spirit will say, look up this definition, there's more you need to know about this word, and this phrase, this sentence means this. You know, I'm just being led by him. Man. David, get out of that section. So anyways, here we go. First Peter 2, verse 11. All who are pleasing to the Lord, being reconciled by a kiss, right? Being reconciled, it means to be reconciled by a personal attachment, by accepting and embracing God's judgment. Thus, the two stand as one now, chiefly of the heart and latter of the head, of the mind in our minds as well, being marked, so we're being marked and sealed as his own, by this love and affection for one another, as a friend of the bridegroom. And on his behalf, we ask the hand of the bride by spreading the gospel, this good news, by spreading the gospel. And we render him various services. We all have different gifts, right? <clears throat> so we render him various services in closing this marriage, becoming familiar with him as a close friend and companion. I am summoning you to console and comfort and strengthen you, encouraging you as a friend also to go forth boldly, to go forth boldly, calling all to receive his name, urging, urging all men and inciting them, inciting their minds, stirring their minds to consider his words of truth with all speed for whosoever that has strayed from the path of righteousness being deflected off the course by the lies and deceit of this world, all these vain and hollow things that we all try to get here, right, of this world, all who have been overcome by their own pride. This is going out to all who have been overcome by their own pride. So you can repent and receive what you need to recover. Receiving the light of the truth by opening your hearts and ears to him. So he himself will enter into your tabernacle and teach, teach you himself all things. All things, spiritual things. We are foreigners here on earth without a citizenship in God's kingdom. Our home is in heaven. We are the aliens here. We're the aliens here. Okay? Residing in this world. It is not our home. It is not our home. This world is in opposition to the kingdom of God. Heaven is not a place on earth. It is a much higher place above. Okay? These tabernacles, our bodies here, are the abode of these evil spirits that possess them. Until, until we are renovated, repaired, restored to life, accept his breath of life, Jesus Christ, accept his Holy Spirit to come into our hearts, okay, which is only done through faith and 
trust and belief in Christ. Being restored to life by coming into agreement with the word of God. Specifically that gospel. Becoming his temple now. Now we become his temple. His dwelling place. We are a descendant. One who has came down from a higher state of being to a lower state of being. To act in a specified shameful way that is below one's usual standards. Reaching a state that's considered undesirable. A group of people being overcome by the sin of pride and falling into darkness of error, which is willful ignorance, right? This darkness of error, usually passed on by an inheritance of the substance, the source of which we are enveloped in. It's our flesh are surround and are surrounded by. We're surrounded by our enemy on all sides. That just don't mean the people walking around in the world. There's a higher spiritual meaning. It's our flesh. Our worst enemy looks us in the mirror every single day. It's our own carnal way of thinking. It's our own flesh. These bodies, which are the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, were birthed into it. It's the children, the progeny of a physical form. We wanted to have sex. We wanted to do as we wanted to do. We wanted to become like the most high. We partook that fruit and were birthed into a physical form. So when people ask, why do babies die? They're innocent. They're not innocent. They've already left their first estate. We all are the prodigal sons. We've left our home. We've left our home. And he himself came here to save us and to bring us back and to reveal the truth of who we are. Understand that. Okay? We have received. So therefore, we that have received the light of the truth are one in Christ. And we are sojourners here on earth, an alien, a stranger whose home is in heaven, being our native country. Heaven is our native country, meaning that's where we were born. That's where we were came from, okay? It's our native country as one that is born again by a heavenly completion of quality and good moral character, being conformed to the image of Christ, who is pure being adopted by God, being adopted as a son, right, by God, through this renewing of our hearts and our minds, having the same life-giving spirit dwelling within us that, that was in Christ, right? He gives it to us by a transfer of his Holy Spirit. This life-giving life spirit dwelling within us that chastises us and molds us as we go about our journey here in this world. To, so we can come into maturity as a mature fruit, coming into maturity, being saved by this distribution of his Holy Spirit. We are bound together by his Holy Spirit as in a marriage between a wife and a husband. And we are the, the bride of Christ, right? A wife and a husband as in a marriage. As we were previously lost and bound to this world by our own conceit, our own excessive pride, and our own knowledge, and leaning on our own fleshly, carnal understanding of things. Okay, so we were lost and bound to this world by this conceit, excessive pride, and ignorance. We were prevented from standing upright, and we were put under obligation to the law to pay the penalty of sin ourselves. But now we are set free by the decree of God, by the judge who is Christ, we're set free. He's passed that judgment. We're set free now, like I was talking about earlier, what happened to me yesterday, okay? So, now we are set free by the decree of God, especially by the purpose of His, which relates to the salvation, right? Being set free from our own ignorance, you know, our own carnal understanding of things and our ignorance of spiritual uh, divine things. Now, he teaches us spiritual and divine things, okay? So, by his purpose, which relates to the salvation of men by the intervention of Christ, which was disclosed in the Old Testament prophecies concerning what Christ was destined finally to undergo, his sufferings, death, and resurrection, and ascension, okay, back home into heaven, that we all need, we all need this, we all need to accept and understand so we can be set free also, throwing off these chains, this, our DNA, chains, chains of DNA, these chains, it's our bones, ligaments, tendons, it's our flesh, that bind us 
here being set free from this that are now illicit, that, that is illicit, meaning no longer lawful or allowed to hold us here. We're to be set free. Satan can no longer hold us here and keep us in subjection to the penalty of the law. The second death. Uh, uh, so I'll just go on. Okay. That hold us here. Now, having what we need and what we required to ascend so we can go back home after the death of our bodies. We are bound together now in love and charity, which is the highest form of love. Even willing to lay your own life down for another, right? So, now we're bound together in love and charity, abstaining, and that means restraining ourselves from doing and enjoying the pleasures of the sins of this world that destroys our fellowship with God. Living in fear, living in fear here, and clinging onto external things, such as property, riches, goods, and possessions, food, etc., all the pleasures that this world has to offer, sex, drugs, all these things. So we're set free from this. All the pleasures that hold our minds captive that pertain to our outward, our carnal, fleshly condition, which is a fallen, rotten, dying, decaying thing. Our bodies, they're temporary, they're rotting, they're dying. Okay? So, now, that keeps our minds held captive that pertains to our outward condition that are hollow and vain. They are of no true value. They're hollow and vain. They are no true value. They are fleshly, they are carnal, they are governed by mere human nature, not the Spirit of God. Now, we are given the throne, the seat of our hearts, okay, oh, given. So we, when we took that fruit, when we birthed into a physical form, we have given the throne, the seat of our hearts, to this animal, bestial nature of mankind that is depraved. And he told me to look up that definition of depraved. You think you know what it means, right? But it's, it's, we are marked, we are marked by corruption and evil, perverted minds, morally bad, that are morally bad. So look that up, you'll see. We are marked, we're already marked. The spiritual is just playing out in the physical here. Understand that, understand what's going on. And Satan keeps us deceived. He's a copycat. That's what he does. Mixes and lies with the truth. So when you think you're saying, oh, this is the mark, this mark, and, and truly it kill me. You're, you're saying, oh, I love this world. I want to stay here as long as possible. You try to save your own life, right? But but what's going on is, is, is you're being deceived. You think you're seeing the whole truth, but you're just seeing a small part of the truth. You're not seeing the bigger spiritual picture. And I'm no smarter than anybody. I'm not claiming to be. I'm led by a spirit. I know I hear his voice. I have no doubt about it. Okay, so <clears throat> this depraved, which means marked by the corruption and evil perverted minds. We are morally bad and we're held captive by Satan through our own physical forms, our flesh, our own carnal way of thinking, <clears throat> which is the inheritance of these temporal bodies of flesh that are unregenerated. Okay, they have not been reborn yet. That have not repented Meaning they have not repented this depravity and everything. They have not, oh, he told me to look up the word unregenerated. It means everybody that has not repented, that are obstinate and resist God's calling out to come out and separate yourselves from this world, that have not been reborn in their spirit yet. Therefore, they are not renewed in their hearts and minds. They refuse to believe in the existence of God. They are a skeptic. They're doubtful, right? They are unconverted. They have not been converted yet. They are godless, carnal, and profane, prideful people. They are deceived by this flesh that covers our bones, that incite all of us to sin. Therefore, we are subject to suffering and death and the penalty of the law. This earthly nature of a man that is apart, that is separated from God's divine influence through the gift of his Holy Spirit, right? They are separated from God's influence, his divine influence. And we are prone to sin and opposed to God. Therefore, everybody who does not accept the word of truth, especially the gospel, they are prone to sin and uh, they are in opposition to God. They are opposed to God. A body that is opposed to our very own soul. It's a body of flesh that's opposed to our very own souls, carnally minded. Desiring and craving for what was forbidden by God. We are full of lust. 
by this superimposition, this covering over of one thing that covers another. It's our bodies, it's our flesh, that covers our true essence, our soul. It covers our soul, which belongs to God. They that have willingly surrendered to Satan, drinking in this inflaming wine of passion that drives the drinker mad to slaughter and kill us by the second death, the death of our souls to be eternally tormented in hell. A soul that is in jeopardy of having true life in heaven, having a troubled, impatient, bitter, and discontented spirit that is uncontrollable, lacking the living water that nourishes and revives us, God's Holy Spirit in which there is life. This human soul, in so far as it is constituted, meaning as a part of a whole, and in the Latin, meaning being set up together to be established by receiving the aid that God has offered us, which is Christ and what he did on the cross, so we can attain our soul's highest end and secure eternal blessedness in the kingdom of God, which differs from these bodies of flesh that are dissolved by death. A soul that was designed by God for everlasting life. Whosoever that has been deflected, you know, in all our inflections, off the path of righteousness, straight from the path of righteousness, that does not receive the light of the truth of the gospel, what God has provided for us in Christ, right? So we can have what we need to recover. Yeah, so we can have what we need so we can recover. These angels, okay, this is all connected. These angels that have fallen will lose this battle against their own carnal inclinations by their own stubborn, willful ignorance that is spreading like darkness through this world as this light grows dim, okay, the word of the, of the truth of God as it gets less and less important here and they distracting us by all the things of this world as it's growing dim. Completely attaching ourselves, these people who are against God and who don't believe the gospel, they have completely attached themselves to their own lusts and desires because of their own conceit, excessive pride in their own carnal knowledge and carnal understanding that is of this world, not of God. And they are in opposition to their very own soul for which it was predicated, for which it was designed for from the beginning by God. Okay. So there's that. There's that. Man, that noise was driving me crazy. I hope it doesn't turn people away from this. But, but anyways, my time is so limited. I'm working 12 hours. Thank God. You know, it's a blessing in a way. But anyways, here we go. So now verse 12. Verse 12. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, they may glorify God in the day of his visitation. Okay, now, having your conversation, that's a Greek word, 391. It means having your manner of life. And it also means this deportment, being deported, deportment, meaning Having your conversation as you have been deported, expelled as a foreigner here in this world for committing a crime, right? As an exile. We have been exiled from our home. We have been exiled. And that's what all this means when you look at this word conversation. Being exiled. In the Latin, it means being carried away. When you look at the word deportment, this Holy Spirit means told me to look it up. And deportment goes to deport, and that's what it means. In the Latin, we have been carried away and held captive. There it is. Having our conversation honest, this deportment, as we sojourn here in this world, among these Gentiles, these people who are lost and don't believe in God or worship many other gods. They worship themselves. They made themselves their own gods, right? They worship these idols. Look at the word image in Genesis 1.26. That word image, where Elohim created man in their image, a phantom, an illusion, especially an idol, a show of vanity that casts a shade, a shadow, a darkness, which is willful ignorance, being covered over in flesh. Understand there's something here. Understand that. Man, that's so, you need to grasp it so you can let go of this world, right? This world is not our home. 
if you liveth and loveth a lie, the love of God is not within you. You might think you're a Christian, you might think, but if your hope is in this world and recovering and getting back normal and storing up things here, you're lost. We're to store up our treasures in heaven, not here. Okay, so there's that. Okay, as evildoers, right, this conversation, being expelled and deported, while in having our manner of life here while we are in uh, exile here, have it be honest among these Gentiles that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, like, let's look at this word good, it's 2570, your characteristics, your usefulness, your nobility, your nobility. Now we are a child of the Most High God. We are the princes of the Most High. This is all tied in. The stars, the princes, the angels, they are the princes, the stars of heaven. And we have fallen into a lower state of existence by taking the fruit of the womb. Look, we were exiled because we turned our face and disobeyed our heavenly father. And we were birthed into a physical form. We wanted to become like the Most High God. We were deceived by Satan and led astray as sheep to the slaughter. Understand this, okay? So, this word, good works. Like nobility. Like when I went to the bank the other day, see, they're not going to deal with me. Even though there's a decree by a judge stating they have to, but they're not going to. It's just like this world. They're not going to agree with me. They're going to oppress me. They're going to lie to me. They're going to deceive me. And they're going to say it's not our policy when I have a legal authorized document by the judge saying you have to do this. And they would not do it. Full. So, therefore, if they are sent a letter from a man of nobility, an esquire, an attorney, that states the law, okay, from the judge that he has decreed, then they have to release my accounts, my, my account, my debt, or, or, you know, what it is spiritually. Understand that. They have to give them back to their original owner, right? So, understand that. It's just the craziest thing how I went through that yesterday as I was going through this verse. Anyways. The way he works is just amazing. He works in mysterious ways, right? To our flesh. But when you're of the spirit, now you can understand spiritual things because he dwells within you and he reveals all things to you like it said in this verse. Okay? So, now, a noble of purity of heart, this, this good works, right? Having purity of heart and mind, being comforted by God and being honest and well-meaning. That's good, okay? And let's look at this word works, which is Greek word 2041. This employment, so we can be employed by God, to which one undertakes to act and to do whatever labor or deeds that God wants us to do. We are to be employed by God, governed by God, by his Holy Spirit, through that gift of his Holy Spirit that conforms us to the image of Christ, to be conformed to the image of Christ, the likeness and characteristic of Christ by the indwelling of his Holy Spirit. Now, turning away from our own carnal way of thinking, our fleshly forms that deceive us, okay, which they shall behold so that these Gentiles, these evildoers can behold and uh, so they can be restored and saved and converted their way of thinking again. So they can glorify God in the day of his visitation. As well. Now, look at this. Also, look at this word conversation. Having your conversation, this manner of life, this deportment, this carrying away, becoming an exile here in this world, being, and that goes to 390, 391 goes to 390, being turned upside down. We were turned upside down. We fell to turn ourselves around. And look, a child is birthed upside down. I mean, just this, how the spirituals played out in the physical is just perfect. It's amazing. Being turned upside down to turn ourselves around. We're to turn ourselves around as we sojourn here in this world. We are to turn back, turn back to our Heavenly Father, to where we came from. Because we are all the prodigal sons. We left our home. We left our first estate. And our Father loves us. He runs to us, right? When we turn back and confess our sins, we repent and turn back to Him, okay? We are all the prodigal sons. We are to overthrow, overthrow our carnal way of thinking, our fleshly carnal way of thinking. And this goes to 303, to be turned properly up by repetition 
intensity and a reversal of our way of thinking it, while we are in the midst of every man, while we're in the midst, in their midst. Their midst here, these Gentiles, have our conversation honest among the Gentiles. Because we're all Gentiles, idol worshipers. Until you are born again of the Spirit, then you become a true Israelite, a child of the Most High God, to prevail with the power of a prince that lives within us because of God's Holy Spirit. Now we become a member of royalty, of his family, his kingdom, right? So understand how this all goes, right? Properly up by repetition, intensity, and a reversal in the, while we are in the midst of these Gentiles here. And that can go to 4762. So we turn back, back. I mean, we came from there turning back to be reconciled, restored, renewed. Understand these things. To turn back to one, the one true God. Turn from our fleshly carnal nature, our course of our conduct here. To change our minds, be converted. Turn quite around to reverse our course, our path. Literally to convert our way of thinking, and turn back again, turn back again to him. So we had a relationship. We have to be reconciled, meaning we had a relationship, and it was broken when we took the fruit of the womb and were birthed into a physical form, okay? We're not born into life. We're born into death and condemnation, being separated spiritually from God. That's why we have to be born again from above, from of the Spirit, His Holy Spirit, which only happens through putting our faith and trust in Christ, Amen. alone, accepting His payment to set us free, setting our minds free. If you don't accept that and don't understand the truth of His Word and don't believe what's in His Word, you can never be set free from your own carnal way of thinking. Only His Holy Spirit can do that, okay? So there's that. Turning quite around to reverse our course, our path, literally to convert us and turn us back again, which can go to 5157, which means the turning of a heavenly body, the turning of a heavenly body that had fell, right, to complete a revolution, a circuit, so we can come full circle. We left our home. We came here to become like the Most High God. We're full of pride, thinking we could do it. We have all fallen short of that goal. We've missed the mark. We've fallen into sin. He came here to show us the truth, reveal the truth, not conceal it. So understand that word in Proverbs 25, 2. It's the glory of Elohim to conceal and hide the truth. And what's happening? We're being censored. The truth is hidden. Uh, there is no justice. There's selective justice for different people of different classes, people of nobility or ruling power that oppress us and it's pure tyranny right here in this world look and you better wake up before the time comes because we have to resist the things of this world look i understand we render to caesar what's caesar but what's coming is what occurred to the early christians as well and uh, many are gonna pass on in a very quick time many and is he gonna catch us up very well may just say call all those who belong to him up and anybody else who's left who's unsure who's lukewarm who's a skeptic undecided or don't fully know the truth because they're still holding on strongly to this world because they're living and loving a lie they will be left here and faced with execution uh they will be taken away in chains and handcuffs and thrown into these internment camps to be re-educated to basically swear allegiance to the governance of this world here instead of the one true God. And, and you're going to be slaughtered like sheep being led to the slaughter. No doubt about it. You have to let go of it. You have to understand the truth. Man, okay, so I'm sorry about the mowers, the sound and all that, but, you know, it's the craziest thing. It's, you know, you, know, you get an amazing verse like this and it just happens. It's the weirdest time. I don't even know. I didn't even see them drive by once. I don't know what was going on. They were just hanging out somewhere over there. Seemed like, I don't know. Sorry about that. But hopefully you can hear me. I'll check the video to make sure I, I can hear myself before I upload it. This is probably going to take hours for some reason when I upload a video. Even if it's a short one, like 15, 18 minutes or something, you know, fairly short. Um, it takes like four, five, six hours. So I'm making this video at, at like 1230-ish, you know, probably started or not even that. Maybe 10 or quarter after 12 something like that so anyways there's that so 
God bless you. Love and respect everybody and help everybody become all things to all men so they can see the glory of God walked out, the love and mercy of God in this life so they can be converted to a new way of thinking and say, wow, that guy's always happy. He, No matter what state or condition we're in, right, because we're full of his Holy Spirit and we're looking forward to God's judgment. We're looking forward to going home. So when we see all these horrible things happening, gas prices and food shortages, all these things. We're, we're kind of happy and the world thinks we're crazy. It's like the opposite of what we should be, right? Because we know we're that much closer to going back home. 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 Understand that. All right? Just like that verse says, just like his word says all the way through. Understand who you are, what you are, where you came from, right? And what our bodies actually are. It's possessed by an evil spirit and that spirit of pride and conceit has to be overthrown, but it can but Christ is the only one who's done it. He's won that battle, but you have to accept him and allow him to govern your heart, your mind. And once he comes into you, and it's and it's a process. We're being matured here as fruit ripening in the light, right? So there's that. Understand that. All right, so God bless you. Have a great day.